the poor fellow soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon, commonly known as the Knights Templar. The Order of Solomon's Temple, or simply as Templars, were among the most wealthy and powerful of the Western Christian military orders and were prominent actors in Christian finance. The organization existed for nearly two centuries during the Middle Ages, officially endorsed by the Roman Catholic Church around 1129. The order became a favored charity throughout Christendom and grew rapidly in membership and power. Templar knights, in the distinctive white mantles with a red cross, were among the most skilled fighting units of the Crusades. Non-combatant members of the order managed a large economic infrastructure throughout Christendom, innovating financial techniques that were an early form of banking, and building fortifications across Europe and the Holy Land. The Templars' existence was tied closely to the Crusades. When the Holy Land was lost, support for the Order faded. Rumors about the Templars' secret initiation ceremony created distrust, and King Philip IV of France, deeply in debt to the Order, took advantage of the situation. In 1307, many of the Order's members in France were arrested, tortured into giving false confessions, and then burned at the stake. Under pressure from King Philip, Pope Clement V disbanded the order in 1312. The abrupt disappearance of a major part of the European infrastructure gave rise to speculation and legends, which have kept the Templar name alive into the modern day. History Rise after the First Crusade recaptured Jerusalem in 1099, many Christians made pilgrimages to various holy places in the Holy Land. However, though the city of Jerusalem was under relatively secure control, the rest of Outremer was not. Bandits and marauding highwaymen preyed upon pilgrims who were routinely slaughtered, sometimes by the hundreds. As they attempted to make the journey from the coastline at Jaffa into the interior of the Holy Land, in 1119, the French knight Hugues de Payens approached King Baldwin II of Jerusalem and Warmond, Patriarch of Jerusalem, and proposed creating a monastic order for the protection of these pilgrims. King Baldwin and Patriarch Warmond agreed to the request, probably at the Council of Nablus in January 1120, and the king granted the Templars a headquarters in a wing of the royal palace on the Temple Mount in the captured Al Lake USA Mosque. The Temple Mount had a mystique because it was above what was believed to be the ruins of the Temple of Solomon. The Crusaders therefore referred to the Al Aqsa Mosque as Solomon's Temple, and from this location the new order took the name of Poor Knights of Christ and the Temple of Solomon, or Templar Knights. The order, with about nine knights including Godfrey de Saint Homer and André de Montbard, had few financial resources and relied on donations to survive. Their emblem was of two knights riding on a single horse, emphasizing the order's poverty. The impoverished status of the Templars did not last long. They had a powerful advocate in Saint Bernard of Clairvaux, a leading church figure, the French abbot primarily responsible for the founding of the Cistercian Order of Monks and a nephew of André de Montbard, one of the founding knights. Bernard put his weight behind them and wrote persuasively on their behalf in the letter, in praise of the new knighthood, and in 1129, at the Council of Troyes, he led a group of leading churchmen to officially approve and endorse the order on behalf of the church. With this formal blessing, the Templars became a favored charity throughout Christendom, receiving money, land businesses and noble-born sons from families who were eager to help with the fight in the Holy Land. Another major benefit came in 1139, when Pope Innocent II's papal bull Omnidatum Optimum exempted the order from obedience to local laws. This ruling meant that the Templars could pass freely through all borders, were not required to pay any taxes, and were exempt from all authority except that of the Pope. With its clear mission and ample resources, the order grew rapidly. Templars were often the advance shock troops in key battles of the Crusades, as the heavily armored knights on their war horses would set out to charge at the enemy, ahead of the main army bodies, in an attempt to break opposition lines. 
One of their most famous victories was in 1177 during the Battle of Montgazard, where some 500 Templar knights helped several thousand infantry to defeat Saladin's army of more than 26,000 soldiers. A Templar knight is truly a fearless knight, and secure on every side, for his soul is protected by the armor of faith. Just as his body is protected by the armor of steel, he is thus doubly armed, and need fear neither demons nor men. Bernard de Clairvaux, 1135, de laude et novi militaire, in praise of the new knighthood, although the primary mission of the order was military. Relatively few members were combatants. The others acted in support positions to assist the knights and to manage the financial infrastructure. The Templar Order, though its members were sworn to individual poverty, was given control of wealth beyond direct donations. A nobleman who was interested in participating in the Crusades might place all his assets under Templar management while he was away, accumulating wealth in this manner throughout Christendom and the Outrema. The order in 1150 began generating letters of credit for pilgrims journeying to the Holy Land. Pilgrims deposited their valuables with a local Templar preceptory before embarking, received a document indicating the value of their deposit, then used that document upon arrival in the Holy Land to retrieve their funds in an amount of treasure of equal value. This innovative arrangement was an early form of banking and may have been the first formal system to support the use of checks. It improved the safety of pilgrims by making them less attractive targets for thieves, and also contributed to the Templar coffers. Based on this mix of donations and business dealing, the Templars established financial networks across the whole of Christendom. They acquired large tracts of land. Both in Europe and the Middle East, they bought and managed farms and vineyards, they built churches and castles, they were involved in manufacturing, import and export, they had their own fleet of ships, and at one point they even owned the entire island of Cyprus. The Order of the Knights Templar arguably qualifies as the world's first multinational corporation. Decline in the mid-12th century, the tide began to turn in the Crusades. The Muslim world had become more united under effective leaders such as Saladin, and dissension arose amongst Christian factions in and concerning the Holy Land. The Knights Templar were occasionally at odds with the two other Christian military orders, the Knights Hospitaller and the Teutonic Knights, and decades of internecine feuds weakened Christian positions both politically and militarily. After the Templars were involved in several unsuccessful campaigns, including the pivotal Battle of the Horns of Hattin, Jerusalem was recaptured by Muslim forces under Saladin in 1187. The Crusaders regained the city in 1229, without Templar aid, but held it only briefly. In 1244, the Quersmi Turks recaptured Jerusalem and the city did not return to Western control until 1917 when the British captured it from the Ottoman Turks in World War I. The Templars were forced to relocate their headquarters to other cities in the north, such as the seaport of Acre, which they held for the next century. It was lost in 1291, followed by their last mainland strongholds, Tortusa and Atlet in present-day Israel. Their headquarters then moved to Limassol on the island of Cyprus, and they also attempted to maintain a garrison on tiny Awad Island, just off the coast from Tortosa. In 1300, there was some attempt to engage in coordinated military efforts with the Mongols via a new invasion force at Awad. In 1302 or 1303, however, the Templars lost the island to the Egyptian Mamluks in the siege of Awad. With the island gone, the Crusaders lost their last foothold in the Holy Land. With the Order's military mission now less important, support for the organization began to dwindle. The situation was complex, however, since during the 200 years of their existence. The Templars had become a part of daily life throughout Christendom. The organization's Templar houses, hundreds of which were dotted throughout Europe and the Near East, 
gave them a widespread presence at the local level. The Templars still managed many businesses, and many Europeans had daily contact with the Templar network, such as by working at a Templar farm or vineyard, or using the order as a bank in which to store personal valuables. The order was still not subject to local government, making it everywhere a state within a state. Its standing army, though it no longer had a well-defined mission, could pass freely through all borders. This situation heightened tensions with some European nobility, especially as the Templars were indicating an interest in founding their own monastic state just as the Teutonic Knights had done in Prussia and the Knights Hospitaller were doing in Rhodes. Arrests, charges and dissolution in 1305, the new Pope Clement V based in Avignon, France, sent letters to both the Templar Grand Master Jacques de Molay and the Hospitaller Grand Master Folk de Villaret to discuss the possibility of merging the two orders. Neither was amenable to the idea, but Pope Clement persisted, and in 1306 he invited both Grand Masters to France to discuss the matter. De Molay arrived first in early 1307, but de Villarette was delayed for several months. While waiting, de Molay and Clement discussed criminal charges that had been made two years earlier by an ousted Templar and were being discussed by King Philip IV of France and his ministers. It was generally agreed that the charges were false, but Clement sent the king a written request for assistance in the investigation. According to some historians, King Philip, who was already deeply in debt to the Templars from his war with the English, decided to seize upon the rumours for his own purposes. He began pressuring the church to take action against the order, as a way of freeing himself from his debts. The French king's motivations went beyond merely financial though. At dawn on Friday 13 October 1307 King Philip IV ordered de Molay and scores of other French Templars to be simultaneously arrested. The arrest warrant started with the phrase, Du nest par content, now savens des enemus de la foi dans le royaume, God is not pleased. We have enemies of the faith in the kingdom. Claims were made that during Templar admissions ceremonies, recruits were forced to spit on the cross, deny Christ, and engage in indecent kissing. Brethren were also accused of worshipping idols, and the order was said to have encouraged homosexual practices. The Templars were charged with numerous other offences such as financial corruption, fraud, and secrecy. Many of the accused confessed to these charges under torture, and these confessions, even though obtained under duress, caused a scandal in Paris. The prisoners were coerced to confess that they had spat on the cross. Moi, Raymond de la Fere, 21 ans, reconnaise que j'ai créché trois fois sur la croix, mais de boucher pas de cœur. The Templars were accused of idolatry and were suspected of worshipping either a figure known as Baphomet or a mummified severed head they recovered, amongst other artifacts, at their original headquarters on the Temple Mount that many scholars theorize might have been that of John the Baptist. Among other things, relenting to Philip's demands, Pope Clement then issued the papal bull Pastoralis Preeminentiae on the 22nd of November 1307, which instructed all Christian monarchs in Europe to arrest all Templars and seize their assets. Pope Clement called for papal hearings to determine the Templars' guilt or innocence, and once freed of the Inquisitor's torture, many Templars recanted their confessions. Some had sufficient legal experience to defend themselves in the trials, but in 1310, having appointed the Archbishop of Sens, Philippe de Marigny, to lead the investigation, Philip blocked this attempt, using the previously forced confessions to have dozens of Templars burned at the stake in Paris, with Philip threatening military action unless the Pope complied with his wishes. Pope Clement finally agreed to disband the order, citing the public scandal that had been generated by the confessions.
At the Council of Vienne in 1312, he issued a series of papal bulls, including Vox in Excelsa, which officially dissolved the order, and Ad Providum, which turned over most Templar assets to the hospitalers. As for the leaders of the order, the elderly Grand Master Jacques de Molay, who had confessed under torture, retracted his confession. Geoffroy de Charny, preceptor of Normandy, also retracted his confession and insisted on his innocence. Both men were declared guilty of being relapsed heretics, and they were sentenced to burn alive at the stake in Paris on 18 March 1314. De Molay reportedly remained defiant to the end, asking to be tied in such a way that he could face the Notre Dame Cathedral and hold his hands together in prayer. According to legend, he called out from the flames that both Pope Clement and King Philip would soon meet him before God. His actual words were recorded on the parchment his follows. Juice qui a tort a a p e acute c h e acute. Il Virginia bianto arriva malaris e e u ex qui now so nt condam a mort. Pope Clement died only a month later, and King Philip died in a hunting accident before the end of the year. With the last of the order's leaders gone, the remaining Templars around Europe were either arrested and tried under the papal investigation, absorbed into other military orders such as the Knights Hospitaller, or pensioned off and allowed to live out their days peacefully. By papal decree, the property of the Templars was transferred to the Order of Hospitallers, which also absorbed many of the Templars' members. In effect, the dissolution of the Templars could be seen as the merger of the two rival orders. Some may have fled to other territories outside papal control, such as excommunicated Scotland or to Switzerland. Templar organizations in Portugal simply changed their name from Knights Templar to Knights of Christ. Sheen on Parchment in September 2001, a document known as the Sheen on Parchment, dated 17-20 August 1308 was discovered in the Vatican secret archives by Barbara Frau, apparently after having been filed in the wrong place in 1628. It is a record of the trial of the Templars and shows that Clement absolved the Templars of all heresies in 1308 before formally disbanding the order. In 1312, as did another sheen on parchment dated 20 August 1308 addressed to Philip IV of France, also mentioning that all Templars that had confessed to heresy were restored to the sacraments and to the unity of the Church. This other sheen on parchment has been well known to historians, having been published by Etienne Balouz in 1693 and by Pierre de Puy in 1751. The current position of the Roman Catholic Church is that the medieval persecution of the Knights Templar was unjust, that nothing was inherently wrong with the order or its rule, and that Pope Clement was pressed into his actions by the magnitude of the public scandal and by the dominating influence of King Philip IV, who was Clement's relative.